in James McCurry's studio in Lambay, Lambay Road. Yes. And uh, here to talk about your current work, your past work, your studio, your life as an artist, as a metal worker many years ago, starting off in Smith and Pearson's. Mm -hmm. Is that where you started? In no, I, in fact, I, I, my first job was in Harry Clark's night last okay. studios for, I think it was about 15. So that's probably... Making stained glass? Yeah, it was in, 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 well, it's an apprentice stained glass artist. Yes. I didn't get to do too much of that. I got to, I got to do the inscriptions at the, at the end of the windows, usually the Lord is the light and that kind of stuff. But you got to meet, um, there was a lot of, you know, you know, there was about five or six artists there working on the stained glass painting, so you'd be helping them. Okay. And that was interesting. I think I actually got to paint one big window and uh, but, um and also the best part was I got that there was some window someone put a stone through out in Sandy Mount uh, what's Evie Hone has a window out there the something is it the Rock of Rock of Sorrows or the Rock of something? I didn't ages. know. Ages. The Rock of I Ages, didn't yes. Know that. And it was a broker. And and I, I remember uh, I got to paint that little bit at last. And really, it did It was quite difficult because you, you, you wait. You know, you had to you had to fire it about six or seven times. Because if you look at her stuff, it's it's these little washes and that. So that was fun. Is it so, enamel? Uh, is it enamel that you paint on the glass to you fire? Paint on, it's it's a bit like soot kind of, and, and then you fire it. Okay. But it's just black kind of grey. Oh. And then the glass of the glass is all the colours. So that was. And I think maybe, uh, you know, my work, maybe that's why I, I work this way from dark with, with light coming through it, maybe from all the stained glass windows. Uh, yeah, how long were you there? About two years. Okay, and what happened then? Did you...? Uh, then I decided to go to England. Okay. As, as, and this was in 1963 yeah. or something, but I only spent two weeks there, I didn't like it. I ran home again. And then I started working with my father in Smith and Pearson's. Oh, okay. Was he a tool maker? No, he was, he was a... Fence and gates and fire escapes, things like that. Okay. Right, I, I, I quite enjoyed that. I probably enjoyed that too much as well. I mean, before that, when I'd been in in Harry Clark's, I actually, you know, started going to art college at night time. And uh, I used to enjoy that. But, uh, but, but once I, I started working at Smith and Pearson's, you know, you're down the country and you're, get the, you're at that age, 6, 17 or 18, where you start to drink maybe and God knows what else go to dances and all that kind of stuff so I think art got left aside for, for a few years but I still uh, enjoy, you know, went to exhibitions and yeah. but I just wasn't doing it. It wasn't a few years later I decided. And was there a vibrant um, art yes, in then, Dublin yeah, I think so, in yeah. the 60s? Well, particularly when, when I was in Harry Clark's it, there was the, um, the Hugh Lane what do they call it? They keep changing the name. Was the, Municipal Hugh Lane. Yeah, yes. And your man James White was the What's, what do they call the man that usually runs the, runs the, yeah. Director? Yes, probably, I don't know, whatever he was. And he was very, he was, oh, there was always exhibitions coming and going and awful lot, you know, so that was, and you could just ramble over at lunch time Mary Clark's, and then you could visit the, the Dawson Gallery, and, and there was one, the other one, I forget the name, but now the Hendrix. Okay. At lunch times, so that was interesting. And the Hugh Lane, uh, were they contemporary exhibitions or were they yeah, travelling exhibitions? Yeah, stuff coming in from abroad. And stuff coming in from abroad, so you had a stuff. taste of what was going on. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. And Would you say that was influential? Yeah, but everything at that age, everything does. You, you absorb, you're a bit like a, a baby, aren't you? You're, you're, you're so enthusiastic, you're absorbing all this stuff and you have the... You know, and then you pretend you get disappointed when you're trying to do it yourself. <laughs> you're, not, you're not good enough. Or you're, 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 it takes you a while. You don't realise this. You think that it's not as easy as it looks. You know, that you, have to, you have to put work into it. I can actually remember, you know, when, um, when, I, when I went to the College of Art Force at night time, the night class, you know, they, they had you up uh, drawn statues. And at the start of the year, um, you wouldn't be able to get a statue. But the following May, I'd be the only one in the room so I could pick out whatever statue I wanted. Okay. So it's probably, you know, uh, others had just, they fall by the wayside, I think. So it was a classical training in drawing? Well, a little bit, but I wasn't very good at it. But I, I don't know, but you just do your best, don't you? And was it drawing and yeah, painting? Yeah, just drawing, no. Drawing? I remember going to some class with still lifes as well. I just yeah. a little memory of it. Two nights a week or one night Two a week? Two or three, I forget where, 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 where it was. Excellent, excellent. So that enthusiasm you're talking about as mm. a 17, 18 year old, do you still have that level of enthusiasm um, for art? 
sometimes it fades, I think, yeah. <laughs> but it comes back then all of a sudden, I think, and you know, they're there, for, they're a few months ago, and I, I, I went through a few months here where I just couldn't face my studio, okay. but now suddenly I, I came back in, I had to do something, and got going again, and now I, I can't wait to get back to it, you know, but I mean, it's, it's the way things go, I think, uh, when you have something that you want to do, then you're enjoying doing. Yeah. Sometimes you know when you're when you you've got to work on things and nothing's going right and you haven't got a good idea and you, you know you, you think you're never going to get an idea again ever or something and then that just leads you a bit to I suppose a bit to despair or something but then once you get once you get your teeth into something you're you're up and running and yeah and that's good but also um to, to go back to Harry Clark when I was there I also. You know, even at fifteen, I, I could. You know, you're working with, with these other people who were there all their life, and you, you could. F you know, one of them was was quite famous. Your, your man, um, Campbell, Christopher Campbell. But he, but I mean, the, the, you could see. You know, these people have gone to our college, have been painting all their life, and they really have never achieved anything as artists. And you could see they were kind of a certain depression or something. You know, so so you you knew that was there that that it was a difficult. Uh, lifestyle, you know, to try and make, I think even, you know, back in the 50s, no one was selling anything or very few people could make any kind of a living, so you could see that kind of, so I knew that, that it was never going to be easy. Okay, and uh, yet you still pursued it, well, so I enjoyed it, that's the you know, inherent yeah. part of being an artist, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, you have to, you just you can't have to do it. Have to. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, and you can't, uh, exp you know, you just don't know what way it's going to work out, if was, you know, it's a bit like, Footballers, only one or two make it, don't they? Yes, yes. At least anybody others probably enjoy the, the yeah, you know, the doing it. But it, so, tell me about um, you're talking there about getting a good idea. Like over the years, you've kind of started about from my yeah. knowledge of your work of the lures and the fish, and then there was the fabulous forest series. They were pretty incredible, and then landscapes, and now the current exhibition in the graphic studio is. Um, Licorice all sorts. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, my question is, like, when is a theme exhausted and, and it's time to finish and move on? And, and how did, does that create the part where you don't want to come out of the studio? Yeah, probably, yeah, when, when, you, when you're, you know, when, when, you, when you get an idea, it, it's good. And then, as you say, when you, you, you know, you do, so, you do so much of it and then you, every way, and then after a while it becomes a bit boring, I suppose. Or you, and also you can't be doing the same thing all your life. Uh, so, so that, and then that, that is the problem. I mean, I know the forest one, uh, I'd always want, you know, was interested in, 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 in uh, forests and trees and just... But I mean, I, when I, w I went out all over the country, uh, the forest, you know, visiting them, and I just couldn't, uh, nothing, I just couldn't work, it wasn't working. And I remember one day I went all the way up to somewhere up up the north to one of the forests up there, and it wasn't working. And I came back again, and and uh, it was I came back quite early after driving up there, and it was a nice sunny day, and I went up to the Botanic Gardens, and this was coming into autumn, so it must be in September or something, and um, I up to Botanic Gardens went, and then I was just rambling around Botanic Gardens, and I seen this tree with these these leaves, which were fading. And so suddenly, before they, they get they get the forest, I'd done the whole exhibition on leaves, which had come from there, you know. And then the forest came the the following year. I managed to yeah. to get the forest together. So one thing, you know, it's, it's, some things can you can be you want to go one way, and suddenly it's, it's, if it's not working, then you get an idea another. Yes. When you're out looking, and and I quite enjoyed the leaves, particularly you know yourself. So, I like that idea of them fading and. and you know, they're just gone. And I remember those. Was there a couple of worms involved? Well, no, but I think there was holes in them and all that. They were really okay. fading and they looked like they were on drugs or something. And yes. electrifying. You know the way they had leaves, these, some particularly. And it's quite funny, the, 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 the tree that, that I got most of the leaves off was somewhere from, from, from California. So maybe there's a bit of Nahuana or something in there somewhere in the, in the soil when they delivered it to Ireland. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, that's. And, uh, you know, I was thinking that um, because I can identify with you, I'm not going to say jumping from subject to subject. No, it usually takes the time. Usually, uh, sorry. Uh, no, uh, usually, in fact, if I, if I see something, I you know, I said that might that might be good. I usually that gets put aside for a few years because I don't get to it because I have all these other other ideas and sketchbooks, uh, and so uh, and that can be quite. 
pleasant that you're just thinking about this for a long time. You don't have the problem of having to make it work. And I quite enjoy that, that you just let them, you know, you have cool, it's cooking or something. Yeah, you have a storage. Yeah, and ideas. they're in there and you say, someday, well, I'll do that someday. And, and but, but I've got to do this before it or, or something. And, and, and then it seems to, they seem to come along like conveyor belt sometimes. But sometimes you go to a bad place where you think you have a good idea and it's terrible. And it doesn't work. Like? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you usually abandon them and then get on with something else or... Or, or go away, but I mean, you you did mention the lures, which um, which which I done about what was it about nineteen ninety or, or a bit before that, and I quite enjoyed them because um, they they, they but I, I felt that I never really finished them either, you know. So now I'm back on them. Okay. But I think it, on a on a different a different uh, they changed a little bit. I think um, they would they would be let's hope they're a little different than and. and uh, could have an idea that we're working on another uh, for another exhibition, and they'll be prominent in that. But it's quite funny. Someone, uh, what I loved about the lures is, is 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 they're not quite what they what they seem to be, you know. And, and this to do with attraction, and also then to do with with, with when uh, to do with death, I suppose, you know, because when the poor fish catches a lure, it's it's it's. Mm -hmm. And then that um, you know, with the, I like the idea that the, 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 this dark quality, you know. The, because most people they do they, they do landscapes don't they they're up there very few perennials you see them underneath the sea indeed and, and even though even though in fact I don't think my lures would really look like that under the sea anyway but that doesn't matter art you know you just it's to do with imagination and and get people thinking is it was it inspired by your scuba diving you know you were an avid scuba diver no I think I actually point. took the scuba diver and took up the scuba diving afterwards okay I think but um I think so. And I've never gone fishing. I've no interest in fishing. <laughs> so, um, mm. but uh, it's just an idea that really. Yeah, I just thought this would, this would make a nice image, and, and it has all kinds of things that you know that that, that um, about. I also like. I remember. Uh, uh, I think it was Seamus Heaney who I gave one to as a present once. He he thought it looked like outer space, and some of them actually do. You know. So I kind of like that as if then it could be something else again. Yes, you know, yes. Well, it's all interpretation, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, you've, yeah. one has no control over how the public are going to yeah. interpret the yeah, work. Yeah, and that, that, that's what I mean. You, mean it, you don't want to give them a boop when they're looking at it. They can make up themselves well, what, what are, how, are, you know, how they absorb yeah. it. Or, or, or uh, I forget what I was going to say there now. Sorry, did yeah, I interrupt you? No, no, you didn't. <laughs> I need I need a script. <laughs> but you've a very active um, exhibition schedule. I mean, since well, you not that much. Well, well, yeah. Now that I've been working full time, which is great. Yeah. You know, before, yeah. I think that's that is the problem. As you know yourself, if you're working, uh, you know, you, you, and I think uh, that I think the problem was I enjoyed my job in the rap studio so much that you put so much into it that uh, I mean, I remember once going. Whole year without making any art, and I said, "Geez, what's going on here?" You know, yeah, because you were working and you were enjoying it. You're working with all these visiting artists, which was great. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're fun, uh, except for one or two of them, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, was fine. <laughs> fine. Uh, you know, you'd have someone. Who like will that. remain nameless? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but but most of them were were great to work with, and you're learning from them as well. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. But I mean, I wasn't getting my own stuff uh, done, and and that's why I think when I. I said, geez, I have to get your act together, and I started uh, doing them s tiny little landscapes because I could work on them, you know, just the weekend, and they weren't too big, so they didn't take up that much room or, or time. It's the same even though I enjoyed because I wanted to, I had wanted to do these landscapes for, for about thirty or forty years. Because mm. I remember when I when I was working with Smith Pearsons, it was all over the country, and you'd be up at heights looking, you know, on, on power stations and looking out over the landscape and looking at the shapes of feet. So. Currently, you're shown in the uh, graphic studio with uh, three other artists. Mm, yeah. Um. So, what what do you feel about uh, the difference between a solo show and like a four person show? Isn't exactly group. When I think of yeah, a group yeah, show, it's no, yeah, yeah. many many people with just mm. one piece each. Yeah. But this is a new kind of concept from the gallery. How do you feel about it? Yeah. Well, it seemed right. Asked for it. It was my idea. I kind of like it because um, you know, to fill the gallery on your own, 
can, can be a massive and it, it can take years, you know, I think usually it could be three or four years work with, with uh, and the gallery is quite big. Um, so, so, and it's quite nice uh, showing with, with other artists that you, you like, you know, you, that you admire. And so, so it's, you don't need to, to wait as long, I suppose, and it doesn't have to have, have to be, you know, a ma major exhibition, I suppose. Um, I usually like to show, in fact, with a sculpture. You know, I've had one or two shows with, with Leo Higgins, mm -hmm. you know, two-man shows. I like that, where, where you have sculpture and prints together. Yeah. And, uh, it's like the artist's statement. It's yeah, something I, that... Oh, it's got one statement, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> I you, forget what it is, you even. You might read that out. If I had it here, yes, I would. Do you? But, but I'd have to go up to my, my file system and find it. But um, Did the gallery not ask you for a statement? For I'm, their press release? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, it is, I mean, I'm not a writer. You know, so, so how do you, you can't expect it to be a good writer and, and, and a visual artist at the same time. It's better to be half decent of one of them than, than you know. And, and you'd read this rubbish anyway. It just put years on you, you know, Jesus Christ, Marita, what's the visual art review, you know, that put you off art? Yeah. You know, they're all, none of them are enjoying it, as far as I can say. Making it or writing about it? Everything, they seem to take the, the pleasure, I mean, the whole idea of art, I, I always thought, what I find is that I enjoy doing it. It might be hard at times, and I might, you know, things might go wrong, you might curse, and, but I mean, that, that you, you get pleasure from it. Yes. It's a bit like the sweets. You know, when you remember them, you, 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 um, to get back to the Sweetie exhibitions, which, and I just, uh, you know, to, to get remember as a kid yourself, what it's like to eat sweets, probably ruined on my teeth, and everyone has his teeth. Um, but I mean, it's, that's what, what it's, what's it about, and, and uh, I just can't understand this, that you have to write a book every time you make a picture. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not going to do it. Okay, that's no problem. Do you think the sweets are associated with your mother in any way? Her father? Well, I can remember getting the money from my mother to get the bus to school, and then I would buy sweets and walk to school. But uh, And then I can remember, yes, my father then used to give me, a, you know, the half bar uh, of Cadbury's chocolate. The children's bars, the yes. skinny flat ones? Yeah, I think that, well, just, well, maybe they, they've changed the way they make sweets nowadays, but I remember mm. I used to get one of them every Friday. From him? I think so, when he'd come home after getting paid, I suppose, or that. And then I can remember once, uh, I was about, I don't know, four or five, and I fell in the canal. And because uh, I lived off the North Circular Road, and I, I managed to fall in, but I, I didn't manage to drown myself. But I'd been brought, I was brought home and put to bed and given a bar of chocolate. So, so that, <laughs> I would be, try to dry myself once a week after that. <laughs> and then you can remember sometimes, uh, remember the old ice creams with the wafers? Yes. I used to love them. Yes. And particularly if, you, if your granny gave you six ones to buy the, you know, the big one. Yes. And then on a, on a summer's day, you'd be trying to, it'd be melting as quicker than you could lick it. Yeah. But I suppose it, uh, we, we must have this, this, this weird need for, for sugar or something, isn't it? Or, or something. Uh, have you ever seen the Pat Harris paintings of ice cream? No, no, no. Oh, they're really fantastic. Mm. Yeah. And everyone loves ice cream, don't they? They certainly do. Yeah. Yes. But it's quite funny now that you could be, you know, you probably have enough money now to be buying sweets all the time. I don't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I, I, I still eat them now and again, uh, but I try to stay, stay away from them as much as So obviously possible. you had to buy a few packets for still life. Oh yeah, no, yes. <laughs> uh, and I bought, well, for some reason, uh, someone was saying in the, in the well, we had this, what was it, recession, I was going to say depression in the last few years in Ireland, uh, all these sweet shops opened up. Yeah. Uh, and I was just, and so, so then you're looking at, you know, you're walking by and you're just looking in the windows and you say, yeah, but that looks nice, the colours of that and the colours sure. of that and the shapes of that, they look good. So I actually went in a, and I, I was in a shop down the road, which is unfortunately it's closed recently there, because we, we must be coming out at hard times or something. But um, so I bought, bought them and your, your woman, but she was picking them up and I said, no, give me that one instead. She couldn't figure out what, what, I, was, what, I, what I was up to. Uh, and I brought them home and I left them on the kitchen table and Betty started eating them. So I went mad. Then she was eating my models, you know, and I actually looked like them, like uh, I had models. I used to sit for looking at them and rearranging them and drawing yeah, them sure. and that. But uh, I haven't eaten any of them ones. They're and very I associative, never... aren't they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I met, if I, quite funny, uh, uh, I met a man at, at, in another exhibition where, when one of the suites was on show in, in the graphic studio and he just bought it at the, 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 the 
Just look at it. Just one of the proofs is over there on the on the on the on the on the floor there. The the bullseyes. And he said, and he said, he brought him back to when he was a kid. Yes. So everyone has has this thing to do with sweets, I think. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, certainly not the pleasure when you're young. So your work is a form of printmaking called mesotint. Yeah, and aquatint as well. Oh, and aquatint. Yeah, because because. Uh, yeah. Could you explain just a little bit for yeah. those who might know about mesotint, what that means, what a mesotint print is? It's it's it's. it's um, well, first of all, you don't use acid or anything like that, so that's good. So you can work work from home. Um, but the mezzanine plate is basically it's a copper plate, the same as you'd use in, in for, for for etching. But the the the, the surface is, is raised with this rocker. All the you raise it and it's it's quite hard to the rocker plate can you know, take you a few days and it's very it's very hard on your elbow and your wrists and everything. And then when the plate um, is rocked enough. It'll hold ink when you print it up, and then if you print it in black, it'll just print in a very dense black, and then you can scrape and and burnish back into it. And I I prefer to work that way. I found years ago when I made when I made etchings, I I, I was never happy. You know the way you draw through the wax. I always felt it was too stiff, yes. or, or too something. I just wasn't happy with it. Mm. Uh, and also with, with aquatints, uh, the way you you have to stop out so you get a sharp edge. But with mesotins, you you, you right, you, you scrape and scratch back, so you're not getting a sharp edge, which which I quite like. And I, I seem to like working that way, coming back from the dark rather than most artists adding to their their plate. And it's quite funny that um, the the mesotin plate is done with this this tool, which is called a rocker. Mm -hmm. And this is this is where the saying off your rocker comes from. No. Yes, because it's so difficult to rock plates that some people went mad rocking them back in the seventeenth century. Because that's all they would have been doing. It would have been their job you know, to rock plates all day. And steel plates are that, which is ten times harder than copper. And they, they went a little wonky. Do you rock your own plates? Some I do, but now I just buy, I can buy them, uh, them pre-rocked. Are they done by machine now? Yeah, yes, but they're not as good as the okay. rock plates by Why hand. Why would that be now? It seems that whatever happens when, when you're, you're... The motion when you're rocking with hand, your, your wrist kind of turns a bit and that flicks up the... The little, the little bore, a little different than, than the machine rock ones, but for for what I'm doing, it, it's fine because I'm very into that kind of classical mezzotints, you know, that that fine detail or something. It's 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 a little rougher, so I can I can get away with it. Okay, so do, would you put the aquatint on a separate plate? Yeah, then I'd have to. You, I used to use the you know the two or three plates for the mezzotint, but that was very expensive and and a waste of time. So. I find now, you know, if I have two aquatint plates as well, again I just aquatint them flat, and then scratch and scrape back into them, okay. and then you know you just get your different colours going over different things, you can get things happening. Excellent. But, um, yeah. So what's next? I don't know. Um, probably having a cup of tea. <laughs> So do you think art serves a purpose in society? I begin to wonder. I wonder, does it does it matter? Does anything matter in society? I begin to the, the despair of society. I, okay. I think you look at the state of the world. I think at some point, you, you, when you started off, you thought art had changed the world, or the, but I don't. I don't think you can change the world. I don't. I think you know, you just get through life as best you can. I think. But um, the drive to make it never seems to subside. No, it seems to be there. It, 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 so James, I was just wondering about uh, the early days of the graphic studio and, mm. and the, the kind of hardships that seem to be involved in making it the success it is today. And I know you were an intricate part of the founding and the pushing forward and the forging the the groove that is now the graphic studio. Do you have any reflections on that? Um, trying to figure out when I got interested in art. That's what I'm trying to figure. get get back to that. We have to start the start. Yes. I can remember. Um, as as a, I don't know how old I would have been, actually, but my mother gave me um, ration papers. That this would have been in nineteen fifty. Those there was, there was ration books, them to draw on. They're probably left over. You know, they've probably been abandoned mm -hmm. after. They maybe ration rations have been. Uh, they didn't need the ration stuff anymore. I can remember that. You know, five or six. You know, be given these little to draw on or a pencil or something. So that and uh, so that's where uh, probably, and then you. you didn't do much drawing or art in school in them days. 
But I think there was, there was one teacher who used to let us drop for about a half an hour a day, once a week, which I, I about the only subject I liked in school. The rest of the time I was getting best because I didn't, it was hopeless or Irish and hopeless or everything. Right. Um, so it's probably all through my life you kind of, and then I got, like a lot of artists, I got a prize in that Caltex art exhibition. You remember that? Is that yeah. still, I don't think it still goes, does it? No, Texaco. Probably, Texaco. Yeah, did they not change the name to Caltex? I forget for us. Maybe it was Tex yeah, Texaco a million years ago. Still running. Yeah. And I think an awful lot of artists that, that are working now got different prizes and that. Mm. So that kept them going. Um, but when I was, so, right, so, so then I went, uh, you know, as, as I said, when I, was, when I went working in Spin Pearson's or that, I gave up art for a few years. It, it wasn't, um, but then I got back, back at it and uh, I managed to get a painting into the living art, just about, I think it was just about inside the door. I think it was in the National Gallery then, the living art used to be. And um, then I got a letter a few months later from the graphic studio asking would I like to do etching classes. And I hadn't a clue where etching was or anything like that. Um, even though I, I, they had to get back to the lawyer, I used to defer libraries all over Dublin you know, for books on art. And there wasn't too many art books in libraries in them days. In fact, the one down from Condra now, they had a closed cabinet with the art books and you had to ask when to get permission. I think because, and I think all the nudes had been pulled out of them or torn out of them. Now whether that was by the customers or the, or the, 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 the library or something, it was quite funny. But I, I can remember seeing it, getting a book on, by Rembrandt, uh, you know, I was about 30 and, and I thought they were all drawings. I didn't realise they were actually etchings mm -hmm. until years later when, when I uh, was asked what I'd like to do. Uh, classes in graphic in the graphic studio down on Mount Street in the basement, and I can remember I was walking there in person and Pierce, just around the bank. You know that the, the Bank of Ireland had that big building around there. So I went around at lunchtime, and uh, Phoebe O'Donovan opened the door, and she had a cigarette dangling out of her mouth, and she was about eighty years of age, and she brought me in, and I just loved the place, the smell of it, mm. and everything. It was a tiny little little um, basement. You know the light wasn't great. It was. Uh, but uh, so I started doing etching class at then, and I think, um, and suddenly, uh, you know, before that I'd never met another artist, ever. And suddenly you were meeting people like John Bain, Brian Bourke, you know, uh, John Kelly, Ruth Brandt, Patrick Poy, and uh, Maria Simmons Gooding and that. And then, you know, to be there on, on uh, you'd be there at night time walking, and, and be, it was tiny the place was, but you'd be in between uh, um, Ruth Brandt and Patrick Poy, you know, walking away, so, so you were learning, mm. and then someone else over in the other corner, another area, you know, and, and I was just, it was, it was, you know, and they seemed to accept me, you know, which is funny, um, probably just because my enthusiasm for it, and, and I think you were learning from them all the time as well, so that, so that was good. Do you think that printmaking has um, a life now in the colleges, or do you think eventually it's just going to be the studios like the Black Church and the Graphic Studio are going to be teaching the traditional etching. Do you think it's dying out in the colleges? Well, sometimes you wonder is it dying out in studios as well? That they, I mean, uh, when, when I was there in Mary Power Paris now, we, 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 we had no interest in photo etching or anything like that. We just, it was just a, to, you know, the, the old traditional way as it would asset and everything. But now they nearly want computers and Everything and I don't, I just, I just don't think it. I mean, can you can you get better than eye painting? You know, if you're if you're painting or watercolor, you know, they just want to change everything. Mm -hmm. Everyone and if they're always going for simpler options, which are ten times as expensive and and don't give you the same quality. I think. No, you know, there's a very deep quality to etching, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very and luxurious, velvety yeah. richness. It's, yeah, it's hand etching. printed, not yeah. where, where you have, you know, where, where uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, I forget now. Um, digital prints. Yes, yeah, digital prints, yeah. which are basically well, yeah. Xerox machine. Yeah. You know, that, that's it. Mm. And uh, you don't need too much craft as well. You just, you just, uh, you know, to take it off the internet or something. So, so I don't know. I, I don't know, maybe, but the trouble is, uh, nothing lasts forever really, does it? When well, life it. doesn't. No, and so, so. Start there. Yeah, and, and then some things vanish and go away, and and uh, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, 
nail something down and say, this is never going to change, can you? No. No, I think it's only as you get older you really begin to understand that. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. That change is inevitable. Not for the better. That suffering is optional. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, um, mm. no, but, but, um, I mean, as you can see, just even looking around out that way, I'm, I'm, you know, for the last few months, I've been, I'm happy working in here with, with, you know, with this new stuff. And uh, I have some other, you know, ideas. I hope to get an exhibition out of it in the next few years. But I'm just going to take my time. Excellent. And, um, so do a mix of themes or? No, you know, it's a one theme show. Okay. Yeah, but maybe, you know, I don't want to talk too much about it because that, that kind of... Fair enough. You can just talk. It. Sure, sure. It's like these people are going to write a book always and never... Always just talking about it and never getting around to it sometimes if you... If you okay. Well then, I look forward to that. Or... Hmm. I'll send you an invitation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I guess you're talking to the show. How would you like that? Well, why not? Why not? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, it would be great, actually. No, but thanks a million for your time. Right. Really appreciate it. Yes.